I'm going to defer to because that's, I think we, it's better for our community to come together, to eat together, to converse, and just be all see each other at least once a month. But there are a few people, obviously, that uh, that are sick that can come to stay for whatever. So we will continue the Zooming for them. And that's what this camera is for. Last month, I was, I forgot to have a moment of silence. So we're going to do it twice as long today. But anyway, we're going to have a moment of silence before we begin. Thank you very much. Now, keeping for the last two months, we are trying. To, I'm trying to introduce all our workers here in Kendall. We have so many. We have almost 150 people that are employed by Kendall to help us make our life better, more comfortable. And so, last we introduced the maintenance staff. We've also introduced the dining staff. And today, we're going to introduce our housekeeping staff. So they would come forward. They were the half of our employees here. So, so I'm going to ask Lita to step forward here on the deck and just tell us who she is. I'm Marceline, aka Lena, um, housekeeping supervisor. I've been here for 12 or 13 years. Put the mic there. Oh, okay. Sorry. We have to eat the mic. Yeah, okay. put it up your mouth. Start from the beginning? No, no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and um, I have three housekeepers that couldn't make it today. We have Camille Clark, that is how she was had a baby for the week. Um, I have Sandra Clark, which she couldn't get out of the room. And then I also have Tessa, which she's off today. And this is my friend. How long they've been here and where they work. Hello. Um, my name is Aisha Jackson. Um, I've been here, let's see, I came, I've been in dining for two and a half years, and then I'm transferred to housekeeping for a year and a half. So I left, went to school, and then came back after a year. So now I'm a floor tech and a six-month cleaner. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kelly Coleman. I've been here almost a year and I do housekeeping at Sunrise Ridge. My name is Jessica Lipscomb. I've been here for seven months. I'm the housekeeper for Webster, but the past three weeks and probably some more to come, I've been on Sunrise. Cheyenne Boyer, I've been here for almost a year and I work on Sigmore. Um, I'm Ashley, I've been here for eight months and I work in the North Outside Cottages. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Sweet Lawson, I've been here 15 years and I'm on the South Side. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm William. I've been here for almost a year and I'm working on board. Hello, I'm Cheryl Jackson. I've been here for like five years. In June, the 20th will be five years and I'm working for Hello, I'm My name is Tammy and I work in Borden and I've been here 19 years. <laughs> Patricia Perkins. I've been here to be 20 years in September. I work laundry at Cat Housekeeping. I've been here in July 22 years and I work in the North Building Apartments. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lena, and your entire staff. You know, we couldn't 
operating here with LQ, and we appreciate all the work you're doing. I'm sorry, so can be back. So no, and line them up. Oh, I'm sorry. And we're going to take a little photograph of you. So squeeze in real tight here. She's going to photograph for you. Two photographs. Of no, two. No, two rows. Oh, two rows. Two rows. If anybody can step up on the stage, uh, gotta get some of you up there. I need to get get more up on the stage here. Yeah, yeah. Take your mask off because we want to see your faces. You can actually put your mask behind your back just for this photo. Yeah, and then Paul, get out of the way. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Stay clean. clean. Thank you. No accidents. Everybody get off of that. <laughs> so now we have our. I'm sorry. No, the only university we have with the Smiths, they moved in, but they're not able to come here today. They had a conflict. So whenever the, our new residents show up, we'll introduce them personally. Okay. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I take orders well. <laughs> okay, uh, we are going rogue. There's no podium to hide behind. So that's good. <laughs> All right, I have a few updates that I do want to give. Um, as you know, I mentioned in the last meeting, we are doing a, a facilities condition assessment and an energy audit. Uh, that's a lot of words to say. Uh, it's a study that's going to help us do capital planning a little better, uh, operational budgeting a little better, and really to get a solid idea of what assets we have on this campus when they need to be replaced, what kind of preventive maintenance plan we need to put in place. So, all that being said, uh, we have a selection committee that's been put together, and we are starting those interviews Friday of this week, and we'll do um, three of the four proposals we received. We are going to interview three out of those four. I'm going to do two on Friday and then one next Tuesday. So, we're hopeful. Um, have some resident representation, we have uh, board representation, and we also have uh, staff representation for that. So our goal was to have a selection by mid to late May. Uh, update on the Rockbridge Area Health Center and our clinic. Uh, they are coming by tomorrow to start to figure out IT needs and some strategy uh, conversations with us. We will be signing that contract effective June 1st. We will keep you up to date uh, with what is happening. They will have the clinic Tuesday through Friday. We will have it on Mondays. Uh, we know that we do have a couple of days during the week that we have clinic. So Karen and um, Danielle and I are meeting to kind of figure out some of those logistics where our clinic may be, because it won't be Tuesday through Friday. <clears throat> Excuse me, in our actual clinic, it'll have to be somewhere else. So we've had lots of questions. We, uh, Danielle's trying to answer those questions the best she can. So uh, we will continue to update you on that. We will also be putting their name on our new signage out here. Um, we had some mistakes made on that signage. So the company is going to redo that. And in the meantime, we're gonna be able to put um, their name on the one sign that's outside the, um, Right here at the corner where it would identify where the outpatient is. Uh, May board meeting. So typically in May board meeting, we invite residents to come to that meeting. But there is also a pretty grand event that happens tomorrow at four o'clock. And our board, our board meetings happen from three to five tomorrow. So we are going to abbreviate the May board meeting because folks want to come to hear Tim play uh, the piano in um, honor of Nancy Beckley's 100th birthday. It was a bit postponed. Uh, so we will be inviting residents to uh, another board meeting, uh, meeting probably this fall. So stay tuned, we'll keep you posted. 
Okay, last but not uh, least, to report on my two favorite subjects. Anyone want to guess what they are? <laughs> COVID, Nielsen. You all know me so well. Okay, so we are up to eight or nine positive independent living residents right now, and one staff member with other possible exposures. So COVID is still uh, present on our campus. Seven of those residents will be coming off quarantine. So it just keeps rotating. So it is still here. It is still um, happening and hitting folks. Most of the time, it's pretty mild symptoms because a lot of you are boosted, uh, but we are still getting it. So we do strongly encourage you to wear masks. We are not mandating masks. We are strongly encouraging that. So in Virginia's overall cases are up, we're back in the red in Rockbridge County. So Nielsen update. Um, I really hope this is my last update to give you. An agreement has been signed with Nielsen. A party agreement has been signed with Nielsen. We are holding some retainage until they get the DEQ and other smaller projects completed. Um, as you can imagine, neither party is exceptionally happy, uh, but we are happy that we were able to come to an agreement that we did not have to go to mediation. Uh, that would have been an extraordinary amount of work uh, for Herbie, for Felicia, and for myself. So we uh, were able to come to an agreement and uh, we are moving through that. So. That is my update for all of you today. Any questions? Yes. You mentioned DEQ. Is it going to take less than 10 years to get DEQ out? Well, we took over some of that. So what we're doing will definitely um, help move that along. Kirby, there are just a couple of things, aren't there? Yeah. Most of it has to do with grass establishment. So grass establishment, um, as you know, we're, we're trying to get grass established. We've had some rain, we've had um, some wind, and so now we're getting some pretty hot weather this weekend, so maybe that'll help us. But it's really around, there's not any major digging or it's really grass establishment. The, the two The two biggest was getting grass established in some of the areas that still need it, and then the other was doing a survey on the bottom end of the property next to uh, one of Bob's house sunrise area there. Hey, okay, any of that answer? Had, had any other questions? Yes, Rob. Gina, can you explain a little bit about how the clinic will work? Can I explain a little bit about how the clinic will work? In what respect? For you or for Rockford Jerry Health Center? For us. Okay, for you. So right now we have two days a week, morning and an afternoon, that we have plenty for our residents, right? We are going to try to maintain that, but we're going to switch it. So one day will obviously be um, Mondays because that's the day that is our clinic because Rockbridge Area Health Center will be using the clinic for not only residents who want to go there, uh, they're going to have two docs in there at this point, uh, seeing residents, it'll be Dr. Clevenger. Uh, and once we confirm that, I'll share his um, curriculum vitae with all of you. And also Dr. Henry, who is the medical director, I've also heard will be possibly seeing some patients here. So the clinic will be open to our residents, our staff, uh, it would be just like you going to your doctor's office. You would use your Medicare. You know, it's not going to be our clinic Tuesday through Friday. It's Rockford Jerry Health Center. Um, and then another day of the week, we're going to have to figure out, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of people using our, when is it? Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday? Wednesday, Thursday. Morning. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say there's rows of people coming. It's allergy shots, it's earwax, it's some basic stuff. So um, for us to be able to rent that out to Dr. Jerry Health Center uh, has will be a, a good uh, income source for us as well, and it will be utilizing the clinic in the way it was meant to be. But they will start to also engage. We're going to have Suzanne, Sheridan come and talk hopefully at the June meeting. 
uh, about uh, the the what they are seeing that's going to be happening there. Uh, it will be for outside community as well once they get it established. I don't think they're really going to start seeing anybody there until mid July, until they get it all set up and get everything done. So I know it's vague. It feels kind of like hmm, they're invading our space, but we don't use our space very much. So the doctors won't work with boarding patients. The doctors will not work with boarding patients, and no, because we have a medical director for boarding first. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Glad to see those that are here and those now on Zoom land. Uh, so a little bit of updates. Uh, I'd like to give a, a total status of submitted work orders for the month of April. We had a total of 697 submitted. Um, I'm going to grab my glasses. No <laughs> um, so some other things that's been happening around the campus. Obviously, we've done uh, a good cleanup around the dumpster area. So if you have not been around the staff parking lot back there where that is, uh, please take a moment to swing by there because it definitely looks cleaner. And I uh, hope those residents in those cluster cottages are, are happy with some of that progress we're making there. Um, Jenny did mention a little bit about new signs going up. Uh, there are four of those signs that need to be reworked. Uh, the max quite didn't fit in the frame size like it should have, so they're reworking those um, and having them installed soon. Um, we're continuing to work on the maintenance zone. Uh, we're still improving in that. Obviously, we set it in place uh, a few months ago. Uh, but it's still redirecting some of those work orders to get to make these guys adjusted to that concept. Uh, we still have some backlog stuff we've been working on. So it's definitely seeing um, some major improvement from that perspective. Um, wrapping up on the biannual deep cleanings, I know uh, Lena and that team's been doing a great job. I've heard a lot of feedback from that so far. It's been great and positive. Uh, we should be wrapping up the final part of that schedule next week. But then we have some backlog from we've got to go back and clean up whether residents were quarantining or we just had to reschedule some for some reason or another. So hopefully to have it all wrapped up by the end of May. Uh, then we'll take what we've learned from that and improve for the next go around. Um, the other is uh, the facilities committee, the horticulture committee, state pillage committee, three board committee. There's a lot of things going on with all those committees. Uh, so I appreciate all the input and the effort and the work being done by those committees to, to start putting together projects, coming up with plans so we can start working on some budget numbers. Uh, so it's it's definitely taking a little different direction and utilizing those committees to help operations uh, moving into the future. So definitely uh, like that new sort of format. It's, it's really bringing out some good information. Um, the other thing is that obviously it's springtime. Uh, so now we're kind of hitting outside. We're doing a lot of inside stuff. Now we're going outside and start doing some stuff from the outside perspective. And another one that's on everybody's radar is power washing. Uh, we will start to introduce some power washing across the campus, trying to highlight those really high, high heavy, heavy areas that need to be addressed. Uh, but some of those delays been, I'm sure everybody's been aware, the cars are still yellow when you walk outside. We've been trying to wait on that pollen to die down a little bit so we don't repeat and repeat. Uh, like do it once and not have to come back. Um, grass behind Sycamore Lane and Sunrise Ridge. Obviously, we did establish planning and seeding all that um, about three weeks ago. Um, anybody that's been out in those fields, uh, we are starting to see some growth. It's really small and minor, it's about a half inch. Uh, we got a little bit of help away from uh, Mother Nature, uh, but I did ensure getting a meter, hydro meter from the county. Uh, so we're going to start introducing and helping that along the way as well. So you'll start to see the water truck, uh, well, it's a Kindle water truck, uh, running some water back and forth on those areas. Um, and then the last but not least, uh, you know, I have to thank um, Jan and all the staff members here. Um, been some large, long conversations on facility size. We've been making a lot of adjustments. We've got some new positions in place. We've got an assistant 
We've got a project coordinator who created the maintenance things, our housekeeping staff, we re implemented the bio deep cleanings. The team is moving forward. Uh, we're still doing some training, getting everybody comfortable in those positions. But I can tell you, I've already felt a little relief coming off my shoulders uh, having such a good team around me. So um, I just look forward to the future as this thing keeps getting better um, on the fine tuning pieces. So thank you guys and greatly appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I like this so far so good with this new Zoom uh, camera here. It feels natural, doesn't it? And I think the sound is good. Um, so uh, thank you all again for all you do to help marketing. Uh, starting next week, we will have five closings in one month. So you're going to get a lot more uh, friends joining you here. So I know you all welcome everyone. Um, uh, you do such a great job with that, uh, but we have folks moving into cluster cottages, Sycamore Lane, um, and an apartment, and you'll, you'll see all of their names in upcoming connections. Um, uh, Katie will also tell you that we did also get another reservation, so she'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, over the past, since we last met, we've had some great events, the uh, book fair that we held in uh, the Strategic Planning Committee had given a grant to buy books for staff. And Meg Stack Pohl and Ruth Toffel and Katie and I went to Green Valley and bought a bunch of books. And we had a great book fair where many residents helped us staff that book fair. And that was a great success. We also had our apartment open house and we had good participation in that. So we're really happy. Um, and thank you, Fitness was the, our kind of host for that. We really want to promote the wonderful jobs that Kristen and Victoria do in our beautiful center down there. And then we had some video crews on the campus. You may have seen a drone flying around. Um, and we had a, a few sets of residents doing some uh, testimonials for that. And then a few of you helped participate in some background footage. Uh, next Friday, for two days, uh, Thursday and Friday, we'll have a professional photographer here. So many of you have contacted me um, trying to be in picture, uh, wanting to be in pictures. I'm going to be reach out, reaching out to you and um, scheduling that. So thank you. Um, we also have another big event, Zoom event, coming up June 9th, uh, downsizing um, with Marnie Jameson. Uh, Kevin had read a book about downsizing and really loved this author and had the idea to reach out to her to do a presentation for us. And we decided to join in with Kendall Crosslands and Kendall at Oberlin. And we're all inviting all of our people plus like purchase lists and, you know, targeted folks. Uh, we launched yesterday afternoon and already have 30 people registered. So we actually upped our Zoom license to a thousand. We think we're going to get a lot of people on this. Uh, so very excited about that. So great idea from Kevin. Um, and then we also would like to um, put on your calendars, uh, July 12th at 4 p.m., we want to hold a little video release party. So once our, our videos that we were filming the last, over the last couple weeks are done, we'd like to showcase them here for you all to see. They'll also be, of course, on our website, but we want to um, celebrate those videos and show them to you. Uh, Okay. Yeah, you want to come uh, okay. Just a quick question. What did you say about the author? Is she going to be here? She's going to be on Zoom land. Okay. Yes, With she's Zooming from her home. And you'll yes. get us uh, caught up on how to. But when well, those are for pr prospective residents on downsizing. So if you if you still think if you're living in your cottage or apartment now and you still think you need some tips on downsizing, you can join in. <laughs> Good morning. I wanted to start out by just um, a quick reminder to everyone. Operations is asking to remind everybody. We still have 11 projects going on on this campus. Five of those are going to be coming very soon. Um, just a reminder, stay out of those places. The construction guys can't hear you very well. Um, and it's just not safe. There's a lot of debris in there. So 
I know we're all interested to see what these places look like, but let's avoid them until people get moved in. Um, also, we did get one reservation. Our goal was for her to move in by Labor Day. More information about her will follow, but she is going to be coming from Lexington area. Um, and that's for an apartment downstairs. And then this month, Kevin and I had nine tours and triads, and they came again from all over the place. We have a lot of people from the north coming to see us right now. They're tired of winter and we have prettier weather. So <laughs> benefits all of us. Um, but those folks came from DC, Vermont, New York, North Carolina, and then we had our normal group from Lexington. But Kevin? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's see, we added some more waitlist members since the last Residents Association meeting on April 20th. Uh, four new uh, couples have joined our priority waitlist. That makes uh, 26 that have been added since the 1st of January. So 26 so far this year. Our goal was to add 30 in 2022. So I think there's a good chance we'll meet and exceed that goal. We have a total of 176. Uh, couples and individuals uh, on our wait list now. Uh, 33 of them are on the ready list. The rest are want to move here sometime farther down the road. So we continue to be busy. We sent out another uh, eight or nine, uh, no, 12 information packets in this past month and uh, continue touring and inviting folks to join our community. So that's all I have. Great. Good morning. Um, so I'm here just to touch base with you all very quickly um, about your resident rights as a resident here in Kendall at Lexington. So I'm not going to go through the full blown PowerPoint by end of day today. If you are on our emailing list, you will have an email from me with a PowerPoint about resident rights. Um, and then for those of you that do not have email, I'll be putting those out in your boxes by end of day today. Um, but just you all have rights here as residents. Um, you have the um, you have been given several different um, items that discuss those rights: the values and practice, your residence and care agreement, as well as your red book. I know the red book is being revised, but in there talks about your rights and obligations as a resident of Kendall at Lexington. Each year, we're required to review these with you or inform you of them. Um, we do that with the entire campus. In April, I reviewed rights with Webster residents, and then in May, we're reviewing with Gordon and Independent Living. Um, you have uh, HIPAA rights um, as a resident here in Independent Living, so that means your medical information is protected. You do, despite being an Independent Living resident, have a medical record here. So um, that record is only as good as what information you provide to us, which is why we do the follow-up life update each year. But you have the right to review those records if you so choose. So if you get with Danielle or myself, we can make sure that you can review what records we have. A lot of that is what we received prior to you ever moving here to Kendall at Lexington from your doctor as part of your review process. Um, you have rights to information. So you have rights to access financial reports, you have, um, again, the right to access your own medical records. You have the right to access the annual surveys that we have in the Borden and Webster centers. So we have those results printed. Um, the Department of Social Services comes and does an unannounced review of the Webster Center each year. Those um, results are printed off and they're available online. Um, the same with Borden. However, theirs are completed by the Virginia Department of Health. But if at any time you would like to review those records, we can make those available to you. Um, let's see. And then just the right to voice complaints or concerns. You all are all getting We Care Connect surveys. You're getting those every six months. That's an opportunity for you to voice concerns um, for us to be able to follow up on, but don't feel like you have to wait those six months. Don't fester on an issue and wait until that survey comes out. 
We still have our grievance process. You can come to me. There's a form we can complete and file a formal grievance um, should you have that concern. Um, and you have the freedom from abuse and neglect. So we have an abuse and neglect policy as Kendall at Lexington. You should have received that upon um, your move in here to Kendall. And then as you move through the continuum, we will provide that. Um, but more details on all of this will be in that email or packet of information that will be in your box. But if you have any questions, feel free to stop by my office. Okay, again, by Felicia to step forward. Good morning, everyone. I was going to introduce oh, sorry, our um, new intern that we have, but unfortunately, there's been a change of plans and couldn't be here today. But I still want you to do it. You see a young man. It's got a really nice set of hair on him. Um, that's here. He's our intern. He's a student at SVU, and he is coming to learn all about senior living. So while I'll be supervising him in the accounting department, he's not an accounting major. He's getting a business degree. But we're gonna. I'm gonna give him time with marketing. Give him time in the health center. Um, in HR, in IT, he's always been a little bit old. So we're trying to get folks to enter into this profession, and this is one way of doing that. So his name is Nicholas Baker. He'll be here. He started on Monday. He'll be here through mid-August. And Nicholas is, uh, feel free to talk to him. He's a really interesting gentleman. He's got lots of interest. He's fluent in Japanese. He did his um, um, mission work in Japan. He is big into the pickleball or something with the SBU, so that's big. I told lots of residents did that. He also sings in their acapella group, and apparently has a beautiful voice. And I think he was on the golf team. So um, if you see him around or down and dying, introduce yourself. Um, and maybe next month or something, I can get him here. But he's, like I said, we're, we're excited to have him. I forgot uh, to mention one thing that reminded me of it. Um, everyone knows Becky Edmondson, who's working now the front desk. Um, but I wanted to uh, let you know she is uh, marketing's new ghost writer. So uh, we do a lot of writing for our website and have a contract with, uh, with someone in another state. But uh, Becky is going to hopefully write about four stories for us a month. So you may be hearing from her because a lot of our stories, we want them to feature residents. So she may be emailing you or calling you to say, hey, can you tell me about... Uh, Chair Volleyball or the Sunrise Ridge Boys is what she's writing about now. So thank you. Thank you, Becky. Okay, for the Three North Committee, last month I talked all about gaining momentum and getting some exciting things started. I think the theme today is probably steady as she goes. Kirby mentioned uh, on the trails on the west side of campus uh, getting all the grass planted. It's in the ground. It's starting to come up. Uh, we're just waiting for his permission and, uh, and the weather bands. Uh, we'll be able to walk up there and start enjoying it. The committee has now budgeted money for picnic tables on top, rest area chairs for rest stops along the way, and uh, shade trees. So planning and selection is underway for those phases of the project. On the dog park, the fence contract has now been let. Uh, construction is anticipated, uh, I think still anticipated for June. We're hoping for a uh, early July grand opening of some sort. At that point, we're gonna have a functional dog park a uh, place where uh, we can exercise our animals. The next step will be the uh, canine operating group, the interest group, will start uh, raising money and planning future amenities to really build that out. Uh, decisions aren't made, but it will probably be some sort of gazebo or weather protection, water line, agility apparatus for the dogs, and probably some ornamental vegetation to break up the view of the fence line. So that's going to be getting underway. Uh, very soon there will be details on the talk site in Katie Webb about uh, 
that fundraising among the dog owners and um, point of contact for all that activity is Vic Crane, uh, who will be back from goofing off in Africa uh, very shortly and undertaking his real duties with the dog cart. Kirby mentioned the, the dumpster, uh, cleaning up the dumpster area behind Webster. The Three North Committee is partnering with uh, Kirby and his operations for that project. Um, in addition to the cleanup that you now see, uh, plans are for a uh, poured concrete pad, a uh, actual privacy fencing around that area, which will be used for the uh, dumpster, but also for storage and things like snow plows and whatnot. And uh, the particular Three North uh, partnership is probably going to be for some landscaping and planting to uh, kind of minimize the appearance of that area while still not interfering with the, the functionality. Looking a little longer range, the pond <laughs> project, we got a lot of very interesting uh, feedback on that after the last meeting. And I have to say a lot of it was, uh, to put it mildly, cautionary. A number of people who had evidently had bad experiences with poorly planned water features. Um, the committee is definitely paying attention to that. And uh, in fact, we've created an archive to collect all those comments, uh, the ones we've already received and future, so that they're not lost to memory. Because a lot of the decision making will probably go on perhaps next year. But uh, if you send in comments, they're being archived and uh, will definitely be paid attention to. Meanwhile, we're waiting to hear back from the engineering departments, Washington Lee and BMI, to take a very first step to see if it's even possible to do this project. Is there enough water? Uh, will the, the ground and land support it? So at this point, we're just looking into the feasibility. After that, will be uh, multiple stages of pros and cons. So on that end, Everything else to do with the, the projects on the campus. Let me encourage uh, even more uh, feedback. It's been very useful so far, and there's going to be lots more to uh, be done. So, thank you, Paul. I want to remind you that all the minutes of the Three North Committee are on Katie, so you can read those and see what Katie has been, the committee has been doing to implement the Three North project. I'd like Judy to step forward for a minute. She has a couple of little things I wanted to talk about. Just a couple, but anyway. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I didn't know I'd be here today. So um, we did hire a cook in the back of the house for Anderson, full time. Her name is Jennifer. She's worked in several uh, sorority houses, et cetera. She seems to be a good fit. She started two weeks ago and oriented on Monday. Wait staff, a lot of you are very excited that for the fact that we are now picking up your dirty dishes. That's always been the ultimate goal. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for busing your own tables through the previous time period and helping us out. That was huge. I know it's not exactly what we wanted to do, but I thank you um, from the bottom of my heart, as does my staff. Uh, the two newest staff members, Brenda, and Linda have joined us, and uh, they seem to be doing a great job. We will continue moving forward with that. Uh, other, um, still have a couple positions open in Borden, still looking for a restaurant cook at this point, and then restaurant staff. So a couple more wait staff to open up for breakfast. But those are all the ultimate goals, restaurant, <coughs> breakfast, continue busing tables, uh, hopefully, exhibition, cooking to order, uh, lunch and dinner, things like that. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. 
And I must say that I still feel a little guilty when I don't have to bust my own dishes, but I'm going to get over that guilt real quick. And I think the ladies that, uh, that come by and ready to take care. You just have to be careful though. If you get if you finish eating, you get want to get them go get, get dessert. You better make sure you somebody tells you to keep that fork there because when you come back, it's going to be gone because they're very efficient. So you just have, just be aware of that. Uh, I'd like to introduce our uh, massage therapist who just came on board uh, recently, and she's going to give us a little information about her. This is Lindy Felix. Thank you. And I'll unmask so you can hear me. Um, I was here before, and um, I thought I was leaving for about a year for construction, and then COVID happened, so it was longer than we thought. Um, I'm in the fitness center. Arbitrarily, we chose Mondays and Thursdays and some hours that on the first newsletter said like 10 till about four. That's not exactly how people want it to be. And I want it to be how you want it to be too. I have a private practice too. So I have brought, I'm going to put this in the, in the massage room in the fitness center. And in it, there are some um, little cards and actually they're from an old auction because I'm a recycler and some pens in here. And if you have requests for other times or ideas that would make it work better for you, please, please address them. Please put them in here and I will read them. And if you want to put your phone number, I'll give you a call. Um, I am, uh, my phone number is still on the introduction paperwork right outside the door. And I hope to pretty soon do a little bit of an update for another newsletter. Um, sessions now are approximately an hour. And reason that says approximately an hour is Different people's bodies want a different amount of time, but we tend to be right about an hour. Um, a few people have opted for longer sessions and that's possible if you like. I'm thinking a little bit about seeing if some of you might like to have sort of a little sampler or you know, mini clinic day where I could offer 30 minutes and um, we could schedule, I, I live out of town, so I don't really want to come to town for one 30 minute thing. So I'm thinking about an idea of like where we might have an afternoon or one day where people could try shorter sessions and see if that works for you. Um, on a day that I'm here, if you just wake up with a crick in your neck and think, man, I could really use it, try to call me or leave a message at the fitness center with your number and I'll try to call you and see if we can get you in that day. Um, what else to say? I'm vaccinated and boosted, um, first booster. I um, always have a mask with me. Several of you have asked me not to wear masks because you don't hear me as well. And that's fine. And some of you like me to wear masks. So ask, ask me what you like. I mean, I always have a mask with me and I'm happy to wear it. Um, hmm, what else do you need to know? I've been practicing a really long time, probably any longer than most people. I've, I've been in practice since 88. So um, when I worked at the colleges, they weren't born yet. You know, and I see them, they, then they think, well, do you want me to help you? And I was like, no, I think I have it. Still. But, so I, I think that's all I need to say. I'm going to put this in the massage room. And again, there are some little cards in there. They're from an auction from Fairfield from a long time ago. Or you can put your own notes in here. There's a couple of pins. So if you have ideas that you want me to consider or ways that you think it could work better or timings, please let me know. Okay, thanks. Okay, Kay. Oh, I was wondering for Kay. Where's Kay? Oh, there it is. She's going to give us an update on culture and entertainment, which is always an active group and committee here. And here's a former chair, a former convener. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you all. Um, I'm going to kind of give you an update on what's coming on real soon. Uh, first of all, this afternoon, today is Wednesday, right? Uh, this afternoon, we have Diane Herrick presenting Keith Gibson. Diane, are you here? Do you want to say anything about it or just let them read out what's out there on the bulletin board? No, you're okay. <clears throat> Thursday is the big piano concert, uh, concert by Tim Gaylord, and that's in honor of Nancy Eckley's 100th birthday. So she invited Tim to come and entertain us. Should be wonderful, and the room will probably be packed. Um, 
Monday afternoon is the Sunrise Ridge Boys. Most of you have heard, the new residents have not, but it's a real treat. Um, and they're also going to play at Borden and Webster, not the same day, but they're also going over there. The university singers are on Tuesday, and I think we have a bus going for that. Kendall College is on Wednesday, the third. Wednesday, of, well, maybe not the third. This is the poster. May 25th, May 25th. Oh, May 25th. This is the poster for Kendall College. There is a small fee. And the Miller House will be on Thursday. Then coming up in June, we have a, a bus going out to Brownsburg, which is just a little ways from here. And there's a very interesting museum there, um, kind of colonial times, I guess you would say. But that's really worth going to if you haven't been. And on the 7th of June, we're going to have another dining out excursion to TAPS. And if the weather's good, we might be out on the patio, otherwise we'll be inside. The, we wait to go to places like TAPS until the students are gone, because otherwise it's way too loud. Um, then uh, Garth Newell is a music venue uh, out in Bath County. And for those of you who, have, who haven't lived here, just ask somebody about it. But it's classical music. There's a quartet, and then sometimes they have other musicians there. It's absolutely wonderful. The, the ride out is beautiful. The music is glorious. And Jim Surface has taken up streaming things from Garth Newell and other places. So if you see a notice about something will be streamed, come down to Kendall Hall, or you can possibly stream it from home. But we would encourage you to take the bus out or drive a couple of people. Um, the movies are going along fairly well. We would like to see better attendance, but we'll see how that goes. Margaret Fletcher has done a fabulous job picking very interesting movies. And we tried having a matinee this month. We tried one. Didn't have very good attendance, but it could be the movie was too long. So we're going to try another one and we'll see how it goes. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. You know, any ideas are welcome. Yeah, Diane, are you going to speak? Yeah. yeah here's Diane Herrick. Thanks. I wanted to mention a little bit more about some of the trips that we've planned. Um, the trips are really wonderful. Even those who have lived here for a long time learn more about some of the spots that are interesting around our area. The Miller's house is down on uh, near Jordan's Point, Jordan's Point um, in the city. And there's a wonderful recreation of the lock system and the railroad going in. It was a real transportation hub. And we're also going to tour on the island. Uh, the island once had a whole lot of buildings on it, but they have been flooded out, and so they got moved. Um, so we're going to be seeing that. I thank Burl for his help on setting that up. And the Brownsburg Museum is just a little museum, and they have a whole country store there. And one of the things that I found very appealing was that the country store was really the hub of community life back before internet and before we had cars and so on. That's where people went for things. So I urge you to uh, sign up. You can go on the bus or you can go on your own. Um, I think it's a wonderful way for us to get to know our area more. And Keith Gibson this afternoon will be talking about the history of BMI, but also about the changes that society is making in telling our stories now. And Keith is very much um, attuned to that. There's been a whole lot of publicity in the Washington Post lately about BMI. And Keith is on the forefront and having to respond to some of that, along with the superintendent and the staff and so on. So I hope you take advantage of these opportunities here and of all of the other ones that Kay mentioned. So thanks. Thanks, Paul. Thank you very much. I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, you know, we're trying to integrate more with Webster. You know, many of the Webster residents were former independent living residents. We all know them. And we want to make sure that they're fully integrated with our the community here as well. Now, I posted on the bulletin board uh, next to the distribution boxes this listing of calling for volunteers for Webster. 
And what they're looking for is they're looking for assistance from us to help out with the uh, residents there. They're looking for somebody, they're looking for just this is posted, and they're looking for one person who is willing to walk with some residents on Mondays between 10 10 30 or Wednesdays between 10 10 30. So if you're available that you would like to help out on that, please sign up on this list. They're looking for somebody to help with the beginning on Mondays at two o'clock. Um, they're also, if anybody's interested in discussing the news, the world news, what's going on with the residents, they set up some time on Thursdays and other times. Jigsaw puzzle, if you want to help them do jigsaw puzzles, part of their activities. Playing cards, if you're a card player, you want to play cards with some of the residents, they're looking for a couple of volunteers for that. Um, also, singers and, music and musicians, just singing, singing along with them, helping them to sing hymns or songs, whatever, to keep them active. So this is all part of the activity program at Webster. And so we don't want them to be isolated from us. And so when we're looking for people to sign up on this list here, it's posted. Uh, it's been posted for about a week and nobody signed up yet. So I want to encourage people uh, to, if you can, to please sign up and be part of the volunteers uh, working at Webster. Now, all, we all know that the next fundraising is the Staff Appreciation Fund. Now, last month I talked about the what did I talk about the other fund? Uh, the fellowship fund. That's over. Now we're dealing with the staff appreciation fund, which is last month it was important for us to donate to the uh, fellowship fund because that affected us. If we were, if, if our funding did not, our funding became depleted and we're not able to continue paying our fees here, that fellowship fund would help us to remain here in Kendall. And that's the whole purpose of that. So none of us would ever have to leave Kendall. But now the staff appreciation fund is for our staff. We have about 150 employees. That does not count our core leadership team. So every all that 150 employees will benefit from the staff appreciation fund. The ones who will not benefit is Jan. She gets no money from that. Kirby gets no money. Brittany gets Jessica. There's about 10 core leadership team members. They are excluded from this fund. This is for the workers. Not that they don't work. But they, <laughs> but they supervise. They supervise. And they keep things going. These are for the people that you just saw today: the the uh, housekeepers, the maintenance people, the dining people. Uh, they're all the ones that will benefit from this after appreciation fund. And we do it twice a year. So this fund, uh, the drive will end on June six, and then they'll have a, a party for the staff. And they'll receive their checks. And of course, the, the checks, the amount they receive is dependent upon how much we give, divided out by the number of hours they work. So there's a formula that uh, so that everyone will get something. Even the person who just arrived uh, a, a month or two months ago, they'll get they'll get something, whether it's five or ten dollars, get a hamburger or whatever, but they'll get something. But obviously, these long-term residents have been here for you know 15, 20 years. Uh, we should be providing them with a substantial bonus because it's important for us to keep them here. We want them all to stay for 15, 20 years, that this is their life commitment, this is their career. And in order to do that, we need to show our appreciation. And we do that by providing a bonus to them. Now, you know, many organizations provide signing bonuses, you know, to, to get people to join the organization. We don't do that, I don't think, no. But once they're here, we want to give them bonuses so that because we appreciate their work and we want them to stay. So the uh, the fundraising started in the beginning of May. To date, we have raised fifty thousand four hundred and sixty six dollars. Now we only have a couple of weeks left before the June sixth party where we get to these checks to the staff. Last year, we collected eighty six thousand uh, dollars for the. Um, for the fund at this time, the uh, early part of the year. So we are about $30,000 below. Now we have more volunteers and we have more employees than we did last year. So the more employees, the less money, the less money we get. So it's important that we step up and make sure we provide sufficient funds to give them. Now I'm I did a calculation. I said there's 150 days from January to 30 May. It's about 150 days. Okay, that's what we're talking about. We want to give them a bonus for those days. 
If everybody gave, every individual gave $4 a day, that comes to $600 per person. So if we take $600 a person times 150 residents, that's $90,000. So that's basically, I think, what would be, be nice to shoot for. Now, obviously, everybody cannot give $600 a piece or $1,200 a couple. But there are people here who can give more than $600. But, so I'm not looking for everybody to give $600 a piece, but, you all, but we all are in different situations. But I just ask you to decide what is best. Thinking of if I can give $4 a day, you know, or maybe $3, but try to, uh, if you have not contributed, we ask you to please, please uh, contribute to this uh, fund before the end of the month. That's all I have on that. I just wanted, they want to mention that um, uh, Linda Dwyer has posted uh, the information about the Republican primary. That's not until June 21st, but there's sufficient information posted on the on the bulletin boards. And if you have any questions, please Linda, see Linda Dwyer about the Republican primary. And I have four minutes. Does anybody have any questions of any of our staff, our supervisors who do a lot of work <laughs> for us? Any other questions we have in general? We'll remember that. <laughs> I, uh, my work order is, is uh, I think they finally, after two years, they finally got to the. <laughs> so the important thing, if, you, if you're willing to volunteer for Webster, please sign up on the sheet there. So they can get in our involvement with this and and the staff appreciation fund. I want to thank you for all coming, even for the people that are in Zoom land. I know you're still in your pajamas, so I want to thank you for getting out of your pajamas, coming down here, eating our food. There might be a few scones left. I don't know, but please finish eating all that because you paid for it. So let's go ahead. <laughs> thank you very much, and we'll see you next month. <laughs>